Hey, how's it going everyone? Today I have four reaching coolers that are down. Um, so I've gone ahead, I've sprayed all the coils. Um, and let's get all these four coolers checked out. So on every cooler, we're just gonna go through the exact same procedure. Um, so check temperature, okay, 70 degrees. Are both the Batbird fans running and are we iced up? So we're gonna check that on every single one. We're gonna repeat the exact same procedure. And I guess practice makes perfect on this one. So, and we're gonna check our condenser fan, make sure it's running. In this case, it's running on all of them. So let's just label all these coolers. So let's label this guy here cooler number three. So we'll go from far left to far right to number them. So let's see what's going on with this compressor. So I'm just gonna go hit the breaker here really quickly, hit fast forward. And let's see what we get here on startup. And we're getting some funny stuff here, two amps, six amps, one amp, four amps, and it's going off on overload. So um, we're probably gonna have a bad overload or the relay's bad, so um, let's go ahead here and kill the power obviously, pull everything off, and as you can see there, relay is burnt to a crisp. Um, we get those pins cleaned off. Um, it was actually a little bit of a pain getting this whole thing off, but we'll get that uh, sanded off and filed down, get everything nice and clean again, and we'll throw a hard start on there. Once we get everything cleaned up, Alright, got everything cleaned up, we got our hard start installed here, and let's see if we can uh, get this compressor going. So, we'll just go over to the breaker, pop that on, and I can already hear it humming, which is good. And we are getting 6.5 amps, which is great news. Um, so there's half the battle, we got the compressor running. and. Let's see here, and we are actually getting to temperature, so this one's good. Uh, we're gonna send a quote for start components. I'm not gonna leave the hard start kit on this one. Now let's go over to cooler number two. And as you can see there, we're drawing 34 amps going off on overload. So it looks like we kinda have the exact same symptoms as cooler number three, 34. So same thing, let's throw in a hard start here. Let's go pop this breaker. And she's already humming. That's good news. And we're getting 6.6 .6 amps here. So compressor is running at this point in time, which is good news. All right, so this unit's actually struggling to cool. We do have a refrigeration problem. I will make a separate video on that. Um, so let's go check out cooler number one. And same thing, 32 amps. And we're gonna get cut off on overload here. So same procedure, throw in a hard start. Let's see if we can get this compressor pumping again. We've been two for two. Um, let's see if this compressor's gonna be a goner or not. And same thing, drawing 33 amps, going off on overload. So unfortunately, uh, cooler number one will need a compressor. So we'll add that to our quote. And last but not least, we have cooler number one. I didn't bring my second phone, so it's, we're gonna have to record it like this. But uh, we have running in a vacuum here, and we have what looks to be low head pressure. All right, so let's head over to our refrigeration uh, pressure slash PT chart here. So we're getting on the suction side, 18 inches mercury, and then on the head pressure, we're getting 42 PSI. So let's figure out what we should be getting. So. How we calculate it is desired box temp minus our EVAP TD. So in this case, we have a 20 Fahrenheit EVAP TD. So let's say we want a 34 Fahrenheit. We're going to subtract 20 Fahrenheit. So desired box temp minus the EVAP coil TD. And that's going to give us 14 Fahrenheit. And if we come here on our PT chart, 14 Fahrenheit is going to equal actually 14 PSI. And for our head pressure, we're gonna take our ambient temp and we're going to add 15 Fahrenheit. So in this case, we have 73 Fahrenheit. 
we're going to add 15 and that's going to give us 88 Fahrenheit and then let's go over to our PT chart 88 Fahrenheit right here and that's going to give us 100 PSI all right so let's head over to our refrigeration cycle chart so we're getting 18 inches mercury and we're looking for 14 psi so we're low on suction and then on our head pressure we're getting 42 psi and we were looking for 100 psi so that tells us suction pressure is low head pressure is low so that can happen for two reasons either we're low on charge or we have a restriction okay so i did a video probably like three four weeks ago with these exact same pressures and it happened it uh, ended up being a restriction in the system so how we're going to determine whether it's a restriction or a low charge is we're basically going to add the charge in okay if the pressures go to what we want them to be approximately 14 and 100 psi uh, we know that there's no restriction in the system and we're low on charge okay if we add in the charge and the pressures kind of stay in a vacuum uh, we know we have a restriction in the system so let's go ahead and add some refrigerant in and figure out if we're low on charge or if we're restricted all right so first things first let's go see what the actual charge is why this is important is because if we're low on charge we're going to weigh in how much we're going to put in and it's going to tell us how big the, how big the leak is okay so i don't like um, recovering the refrigerant at this point I like adding okay and that's gonna tell me exactly how big the leak is so let's start charging up here you can see our ambient is 72 let's call it 73 so that means my condenser saturation temperature should be around 88 so I'm just gonna keep charging till I get close to 88 we're at 89 we're right there on the border all right so as you can see there we ended up with 17 psi and we ended up with 102 psi in our high side so as you can see our pressures are slightly high um, i probably overcharge it slightly but the whole point of that exercise was for us to determine if we're low on charge or if we have a restriction so this tells me for sure that we are low on charge uh, so now we're going to go do a leak test and go from there all right so as you can see there we shut off the system it's equalizing um, we were down to 40 PSI on our low side. Uh, I'd like it to be a little bit higher, but let's see if we can find the leak. If we can't, um, we'll recover and we'll pump in some nitrogen. But let's go check our condensing unit first. I don't see any oil stains or anything. But let's go check um, all these access ports I've been brazed in. Let's make sure everything's good here. All right, no leaks there. Let's go up to our evaporator coil and usually we'll find the leak in here. And I'll just hit fast forward here because I leak tested this thing pretty thoroughly and it took a while. You don't need to hear beeping for the next 17 minutes. So let's just go ahead and hit all the U-bends. Start with that and then we'll just kind of go across the coil. And let's see if we pick anything up on her. So far, no luck. But let's just keep being thorough here. And finally, picking something up here on the bottom of the coil. And you can see right in this area right there. All right, we have a definite leak somewhere right here. Um, definitely not a false alert here. It's definitely a leak. Uh, so we are going to need an evaporator coil on cooler number four. We'll send all our quotes, and I guess we'll do a follow-up video.